Hello YouTube, welcome back to Dark Moon Metal Shop. Today I'm going to be doing a short video in uh, response to an email that I received recently. And I was kind of surprised when I read the email and saw where it was from. Apparently uh, this individual had a problem leaving me a comment on my other spot welding video, the first one that I did, and uh, found my email address through my website and contacted me directly through there. And apparently what he is working on, uh, it's basically an upcycle project. He wants to take things like uh, tin cans and, and repurpose them and make little small maybe backpacking stoves. Um, he wants to use stainless steel for the grates, however. He wants to have something that's, uh, that's very strong and something that you can wash easily. You don't have to worry about it rusting. So since the grill is the hardest part to make and he can keep on replacing the cans, I, I can see where that would make sense. So basically what he's talking about is something like this. Now this is something I bought uh, at a tag sale. It's actually part of something that I bought. Uh, it was a novelty item. It was a little uh, tin can that you put a couple charcoal briquettes in and it's big enough to cook one hamburger. And I just thought that was kind of cool so I picked it up. I've used it on a few scout trips and, and you know kind of impressed the kids and they all wanted one but of course I have no idea where to, where to even find these things anymore. But this grill is basically what he's looking to make. Um, it uses eighth inch stainless steel wire for the circle and it uses 330 seconds wire for the, uh, the grates themselves. So what I've done is I've gotten some eighth inch stainless steel welding rod and I have some 330 seconds stainless steel welding rod, which for me is the easiest source for uh, acquiring stainless. Now I'm going to be talking both US and metric in this video because uh, the email that I received is from a gentleman who lives in Cape Town, South Africa. And for somebody who's just hanging out on YouTube, uh, to have an email come from over 7,800 miles away asking me a, a question on welding, that, that just really floored me. And um, I told him that the easiest way to answer some of his questions was to film this video. So when it's done, I'll be sending him a link and I hope uh, he finds out what he needs to know to complete his project. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to be using a... Harbor Freight Spot Welder. This is the one that I used in my first spot welding video. Um, I'm going to show you a couple little tricks to set it up because working with round wire can be a little bit of a pain in the neck. You need to hold both pieces plus activate the trigger on the unit so you basically need a third hand. Um, so let's jump right in and I'll show you what I've got and how I'm going to be setting things up. So for today's video I'm going to be using some flat stock. Uh, both of these are about the same. Uh, this is all stainless steel by the way. Uh, this is 42 thousandths, or roughly 1.05 millimeters. I have 330 seconds welding wire, uh, which is about 92 thousandths, or 2.33 millimeters. I have eighth inch welding wire, which is uh, 125 thousandths, or about 3.17 millimeters. Now, these are the two sizes that this grill is made out of, so that's why I'm primarily interested in these. Um, I do have a small piece of quarter inch thick, which is 250 thousandths, uh, 6.34 millimeters, which is way beyond the capacity of the spot welder, which is a combined thickness material of 3 16 or about 4.8 millimeters. Uh, the other things that I'm going to be using in today's video, uh, I have a pair of gloves, a pair of safety glasses, and two pieces of 2x3 um, just ripped out of a piece of lumber, and I'll show you what those are for in just a second. So what I have set up here, I have the 330 seconds wire and I also have the eighth inch wire. Um, I've got it set up on the block so I can kind of have both of my hands free if I need them. Uh, this just happens to be a 2 by 3 it's almost the perfect height to line up with the top of the bottom jaw. So that's what those two blocks of wood are for. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now, whoops, I knew I was going to have to hold on to one of these. Apply a little pressure and I will trigger the spot welder. We'll let it get really nice and warm. That's actually holding quite well. Here is our second test. Uh, both of these this time are a full eighth inch in diameter. Um, <clears throat> the eighth inch and 330 seconds, this is just about a millimeter more than what this spot welder is rated for and it seems to be holding pretty well. This is going to be just over 
uh, I believe, just over two millimeters and change of what this spot welder is rated for. So let's give this a shot and see what we get. I'll let it get nice and red. And no, not even close. I got a little bit of um, a fusion there, but no strength in it whatsoever. For the next test, we're going to go back to a 332nds and 8th inch rod. Uh, the 8th inch is bent on a 90, and what I'm going to do is weld this into a triangle. Once the welds are completed, we're going to take it and we're going to put it into our vise and see how hard it is to pull these guys apart. Give that some time to cool off and we'll go over to the vise. So I gave it some thought and I decided I'm not going to do destructive testing in a vise because all that proves is yes I can break a weld. I'm curious to see what this is capable of supporting as far as weight. Now this is the sample that we made that we let cool. This is the eighth inch welding wire spot welded to the 332nd inch welding wire. Now according to the spot welder this is just a hair over a millimeter thicker than what the spot welder is supposed to be able to weld together as far as its maximum capacity. What I'm going to do, I just clamp this board to the leg of my desk and I'm going to hang this off of a screw and I've taken another piece of wire and just kind of made an L with a hook on the top. Now this isn't going to be able to stay balanced, it is going to fall to one side, but I want to see how much weight this weld will actually hold. So I'm going to start out with one kilogram or 2.2 pounds and it's got no problem holding that together so let's go to five pounds which is just happens to be the next size up I have uh, I believe this is 2.3 kilograms <clears throat> and the weld is no problems there The next size up that I have is a 8.8 .8 pounds or 4 kilograms. Slide down. And yes, I'm being very attentive as to where my feet are under these weights. So I'm definitely not trying to break this on purpose. If it lets go, it's going to let go and it's going to be a surprise to me and uh, maybe a few other people. <laughs> but um, let's put this on here. So far, so good. No problems with the weights. That's the biggest weight I have. But um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and try uh, to add the one kilogram weight to this. That'll bring it up to five kilograms or uh, 11 pounds. Weight still holding. Okay, this will bring it up to about 13 pounds or so and uh, 6.3 kilograms, and that's this is going to be the heaviest I can make it, so we'll see if that holds. And I'm actually bending the brass uh, wire at this point. So the <laughs> the stainless steel spot weld is, is actually better than the, uh, the brass as far as being able to support weight. But um, this had almost a full... Uh, 6.3 kilograms on it or uh, just about 11 pounds and those two little welds seem to hold up pretty darn good. So the answer to the question is can you spot weld stainless steel together? Absolutely you can do it. Um, can you upcycle your your cans and make the stainless steel grills? If you're using this type of material uh, where you have your eighth inch and your 332 seconds Yes, I believe it's definitely feasible because the more welds ultimately that you put on this, the stronger it's going to be. So um, I hope that answers your question as to whether or not something like this can be done with a regular spot welder like I purchased from Harbor Freight. All right, YouTube. So before I end the video, I'm going to take this opportunity to answer another question that came up after my last spot welding video. 
and that is people generally see spot welding demonstrations where you're joining two pieces of metal together. And the question that pops up is, well, can you join more than two pieces? I've never tried it, I've never had the reason to, but I think that if the combined thickness of the material is within the, uh, the capabilities of the welder to uh, actually send that uh, current through and get them to fuse, I don't see why not, but I've never tried it, so I am going to try it right now. Um, since I started filling the, um, uh, the segment with the weights, I misplaced my safety glasses, so I'm going to be wearing these. And no, I'm not just grabbing a random pair of glasses. Uh, these are made by Miller. Uh, they have, I believe, a shade 5 lens in them. They're meant for brazing. And they meet all of the safety requirements set forth by OSHA. So I'm not just trying to look cool, even though these do look kind of cool. So let's see what we can get with this. I'm not even seeing it turn red yet. Oh, and the answer is no. It did not work, even though these are well within the range of this to process. Uh, let's try three, see if that works. Give a little pressure. Now I'm seeing some color. Three works, but it is very, very uh, loose, um, barely sticking together. These two, yeah, it, it, it almost feels like there's oil in between them and it's just kind of sticking. Um, there's no contact here at all. Uh, so let's give it a shot with just the two and see, make sure there's nothing wrong with the spot welder itself. There shouldn't be. Give this a decent pulse. A lot more color in that. Yeah, that's not moving. So, uh, apparently, at least with this Harbor Freight spot welder, um, no, going through more than two pieces of material can be uh, problematic, so I would stick to just two pieces. Well, I hope you learned something. I know I did. And uh, I just want to show you one last thing and uh, we'll call it a video. I really wanted to see if these welds would truly hold a total of 20 pounds. Um, I went down to the basement, I found a strap, and I've got 20 pounds worth of weight. There's two 10 pound weights there, suspended by nothing but the spot welded uh, sample that we had made. And I put the stress points, both of them, on the welds themselves. I didn't want to rely on that corner piece. So there is. 20 pounds of force on each one of these welds and they both look just as good and as sturdy as when I put them together. So don't really know what it's going to take to break this. Uh, I don't have time to test it today, but uh, feel free to do your own tests at home. I'd be curious to see what your results were compared to um, whether you have a 110 spot welder or a 220 volt spot welder. But uh, yeah, life's good. Well, all right, YouTube. I hope you enjoyed the video and I want to thank you for hanging out with me this long. Uh, I'm going to be doing a shop tour video pretty soon. Uh, that's what I've been doing for the last week. I just basically tore the whole shop apart, got a few new pieces of equipment, and uh, I was just running into everything. There was just no room for a lot of the projects I had going on. So um, as Dana would say, I played the best game of shop Tetris ever and uh, made myself a worthwhile workspace. Uh, one of the things that I did acquire, I'll show you real quick. Those are 200 pound propane tanks. So I'm gonna be setting those up on the forge. So we're gonna be doing a lot more blacksmithing demos in the future. I'll catch you guys later on. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon. This has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. I'll see you again soon.